This is Auto Focus, the Philippines' premier motor show. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this episode of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. An MPV from Toyota, the Avanza GCVT, and a premium midsize SUV from BMW, the X3. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two compact SUVs, the Ford Territory Titanium versus Hyundai Tucson GLS AT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about reading and understanding a dyno chart. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the new Honda City and Rio launch as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Toyota. This car review takes a look at the top of the line entry of Toyota in the subcompact MPV segment, the 7-seater Avanza G CVT. Toyota Motor Philippines has been dominating the local automotive sector by offering the most comprehensive lineup of vehicles and compassing all segments from passenger sedans and hatchbacks to MPVs, SUVs, and crossovers, to pickups and vans and other light commercial vehicles. Toyota also relies on a reputation for rolling out competent, reliable, and affordable vehicles that meet the needs and wants of car buyers. But in the face of the increasing number of competing brands in all segments, some of which are offering ever more advanced automotive tech as well as eye-catching styling, even in the lower end of the budget spectrum, Toyota needs to step up its game. This may be especially true in the subcompact MPV segment, which has seen the rise of very affordable new entries from China along with more competitive models from other Japanese and Korean brands. In this segment, Toyota offers the Avanza, a 7-seater MPV now in its third generation of development and upgraded to command a bigger slice of the market. Atop the line is the Avanza GCVT, which arrived looking bigger than its predecessor at 4,395 mm long, 1,730 mm wide, and 1,700 mm tall. It clears the ground by 190 mm rolling on 16-inch alloy wheels wrapped in 195-60 R16 tires. The third generation of Anza looks as contemporary as other latest generation Toyota crossovers, including the Rays which shares the same DNGA unibody platform. The slim split-type LED headlights, the large and deep black trapezoidal grille, the character lines on the side all help to project a sleek modern look. Toyota also equipped the Avanza G with LED clearance lamp, front fog lamps, side view mirrors that power adjust and fold and feature turn lights, LED rear combination lamps with reflectors, intermittent front and rear wipers, rear spoiler, high mount stop lamp, and fin type antenna. The Avanza G CVT comes with keyless entry and push button start. The cabin is now much roomier than its predecessor. Two-tone fabric upholstery makes it homey despite the carbon fiber accents. Both front seats slide and recline while the second row seat for three slide, recline, and tumble to provide what Toyota calls long sofa mode. 
That means it tumbles flat. The third row seat for two also tumbles flat to provide the same long sofa mode. The instrument cluster features a 4.2-inch TFT multi-information display between the circular speedometer and tachometer. The steering wheel comes in plain urethane, but it tilts and telescopes and features switches for the audio and multi-information display in the Avanza GCVT. The shift tray at the top of the line Avanza is also plain urethane, but features sequential shift function. All Avanza variants come with power windows, power speed sensing door locks, air conditioning with digital controls in the front console and manual controls for the rear vents. Infotainment and connectivity at the top of the line Avanza come with 8-inch audio display system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, AM FM radio, Bluetooth and USB portal, and four speakers. The Avanza GCVT is powered by a 2NRVE 1496cc engine that makes out 106 PS at 6000 RPM and 138 Newton meters at 4200 RPM. Power and torque are set to the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission. Those numbers should prove adequate for problem-free driving in stop-and-go traffic in the city, but maybe not for fun driving in the countryside. Judicious use of the sequential shifter may be needed for steep uphill climbs when carrying a full load of seven. The third generation of Oz has vastly improved ride and comfort compared to its predecessor, owing perhaps to its new unibody construction and the tuning of the suspension system featuring the front McPherson strut and rear torsion beam combo. Reliable stopping power comes from a brake system featuring front ventilated discs and rear drums. Toyota equipped all three Avanza variants with anti-lock brake system and vehicle stability control with traction control, hill start assist, three-point ELR seat belts for seven, with driver and front passenger getting pre-tensioner and force limiter, ISOFIX child restraint system, and dual airbags. The Avanza GCVT shares with a mid-priced ECVT and EMT, back camera and rear sonar as well as a Toyota vehicle security system with alarm and immobilizer. The top-of-the-line Avanza is also equipped with blind spot monitoring and rear cross-traffic alerts, as well as side and curtain shield airbags. The Toyota Avanza 1.5G CVT is listed at 1.059 million. Does it have enough features and performance to compete at that price in the segment? We'll have to see how well it does against the competition at the end of the year. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Life should be filled with stories to be liked and loved. Elevate your drive with the new Honda City. Take value and performance to the next level so you can view more places and check into new experiences. With Honda Sensing, you can do all these with peace of mind with its modern design and advanced features. The new Honda City is for those who are ready to step up their game. The new Honda City. Elevate your drive. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. After the weekend public launch of the VW Tharu at the Carrera Cafe in Philinvest, Volkswagen Philippines is staking its newest entry to the compact SUV market on a roadshow at malls. From September 30 to October 6, the VW Tharu is showcased at the main atrium of San Fernando Pampaga. From October 5 to 11, VW Tharu can be seen and experienced at the second level of the block in SM North Edsa, Quezon City. From October 19 to 25, people can check out the two variants of the VW Tharu, the 300 TSI DSG SE, priced at 1.808 million pesos, and the 300 TSI DSG SEL, priced at 1.945 million pesos, at the ground level of the podium in Mandaluyong City. 
The Taru is really a Volkswagen inside it out. You would need to experience it by uh, driving it, having a feel of the cockpit, the materials, the build quality, and the overall driving and handling. It is a compact SUV, which would have a number of features both for the exterior and the interior. For the exterior, it would have matrix LED lighting, the power tailgate with virtual assist for the rear, as well as a 360 camera. For the interior, highlights would be the panoramic sunroof, front power seats, all leather interior, as well as the digital instrumentation cluster. Honda AC Motors plants and nurtures the growth of a tree for every eagle sold by the dealership. Dubbed the AC Motors Acre Movement, the initiative has seen the planting of more than 5,000 trees at the Ayala Land Carbon Forest in Alaminos, Laguna. AC Motors and Honda Cars Philippines recently hosted what it called the Honda AC Motors Gift of Tree Awarding Ceremony to mark going past the 5,000 tree milestone. Toti Zara, president of Iconic Dealership Incorporated, a multi-brand dealership group under AC Motors, explains the rationale for their acre movement. Ayala as a company, you know, we are committed to achieving net zero by 2050. And as AC Motors, we felt we needed to contribute to that program. And planting a tree was for us our small little way of contributing, aside from coming out with cleaner, cleaner uh, vehicles on the road instead of giving customers regular freebies. Instead, our gift to customer would be a tree that we will not only plant, but nurture until maturity. Today, we are planting 5,000 tree. Within the year, we are looking at planting 7,000 tree. And based on the feedback from our customers, we are committed to continue this program beyond 2023. A special guest at the ceremony was Honda Cars Philippines President, Rie Miyake. In globally, uh, Honda has two uh, important targets by uh, 2050. The one is the zero traffic collision fatalities and also the carbon neutrality. So, uh, including the 100% uh, of the electrification uh, by 2040. So, align with this kind of the uh, global uh, direction, uh, HCPI Honda Cars Philippines. Uh, we are really happy to uh, make a very significant step forward with the all new CRV just launched this month. Uh, including the uh, EHEV, this is the hybrid, full hybrid technologies. Ford Philippines hosted a media test drive for one of its best selling SUVs. The event was called the Next Gen Ford Territory Experiential Drive, and over two days, invited members of the motoring and social media got to drive Ford's popular small SUV on the zigzag roads of Rizal, the highways of Laguna, and the hills of Tagaytay and the final destination at Anya Resort. So this is a perfect route for the next generation for territory as it allowed our media friends to be able to experience the different driving modes, particularly, uh, you know, the eco mode, the sport mode, the normal mode, and the mountain mode. No? So this is also one of the newest features of the next generation territory. We were also able to showcase the different capabilities and the different features of the territory through that route. Special courses and activities were also laid out to challenge participants on how to optimize use of such driver assist aids like the 360 degree camera and the active park assist. So basically, the next generation Ford Territory is a completely redesigned and a better small SUV from its predecessor with its power and new transmission as well as smart and safe features which include the active park assist we also have the wireless charger which is uh, a lot of our customers really love it also comes with a lot of driver assist technologies that make it a safe suv to drive and of course the next generation ford territory comes with five-year warranty to really enhance the ownership experience Lexus Manila hosted an event described as an immersive voyage into a unique oral and culinary oasis at the Lexus Mitsukoshi in BGC. The event also meant to raise awareness for Lexus Premium, a suite of financial and other services meant to enhance and give more value to the overall Lexus ownership experience. Today is another testament to that belief, belief and philosophy. We are introducing a premium luxury experience promising to complement 
the minutes of our current and new Lexus guest. Lexus Premium is a first of its kind, bringing a suite of services all centralized within Lexus. First off is the launch of Lexus Financial Services, LFS, where offer a wide range of financial solutions for clients purchasing any of our Lexus models than the Lexus way. Guests who attended the two-day event at Lexus Mitsukoshi enjoy the kind of lifestyle and experiences afforded by Lexus ownership. GEC Motor Philippines held the brand's first-ever track day event at the Batangas Racing Circuit to showcase the exceptional capabilities of the MPOW compact sedan. We chose the Batangas Racing Circuit because of its richness and heritage in Philippine motorsport, wherein we wanted to showcase the performance of the GAC MPOW. It is a very good daily car, but then once you put it on the track, ibang klase siya. GAC vehicle owners, the brand's dealer partners, as well as members of media were invited to undergo several driving activities at the BRC overseen by renowned local motorsports star and professional race driver, George Ramirez. So first and foremost, I mentioned that it is a sedan you can use on a daily basis, but when you open it up, all 174 horsepower of that comes out, 270 Nm of torque, and zero to 100 in under seven seconds. I've heard someone say that it's actually the best sedan Performance sedan under 3 million pesos, but it's not even 3 million pesos. The entry is at 1085. Chinese automotive brand Shang'an now has a new partner in the Philippines. Shang'an Auto is now part of the automotive portfolio of Inchcape Philippines. During the brand's formal launch under Inchcape, Shang'an also rolled out the X7 Plus, a 7-seater SUV, while also exhibiting the S7 electric vehicle. Tonight, we're very happy to launch Shang'an Auto in the Philippines under a new distributor, Inchcape Philippines. We are now here on the 5th Avenue of BGC. Uh, we have our whole product range presented, plus two new vehicles, 7-seater SUV, the X7 Plus, and our electric vehicle, the Tipal S7. The X7 Plus is available right now. The S7 is an exhibit model uh, that we hope to introduce once the Philippine market is ready. Shang'an Auto is looking to grow its network and reach in the Philippine market. We are continually growing our network so that we are also, the brand is also accessible to more customers nationwide. So right now we have 19 locations and we will grow this by maybe up to 30 plus locations in the next couple of years. Ford Philippines returns to holding face-to-face -face driving skills for live programs starting with a first event at the PhilInvest tent in Alabang. This is Ford's 15th year of holding the DSFL, a globally recognized driving program that reinforces the American brand's commitment to promoting driver and passenger safety that combines a comprehensive training module and hands-on driving exercises. It's actually our 15th year doing uh, driving skills for life and we've actually taken over 33,000 people through this and really the key factor in driving skills for life is understanding how to create safer roads for for Filipinos. The bottom line here in the Philippines is you know there, there are so many opportunities for dangerous experiences on the road and the focus is really to find ways to reduce the um, experiences of accidents or injuries on the road and so it's everybody's responsibility to take care of your other Filipino um, residents and so it's a combination of whether you're a driver, if you're a pedestrian, if you're a motorcyclist, it's all of our responsibilities to keep our fellow Filipinos safe. Overseeing the Driving Skills for Life program for Ford locally is JP Twasson. Today one of the things we're going to focus on are 
sharing the road with motorcycles, bikes, pedestrians. A lot of accidents have been happening lately involving sharing the road and we believe that uh, if we can educate the drivers and riders properly, then we can have safer roads. Ford is encouraging participants at the DSFL to impart to others what they learned about how to drive more safely on the road. So all of the participants today are going to be given a QR code and uh, they can download uh, quite a bit of the tips and uh, messages that we have in today's seminar for free. And then they can print it out, give it to their friends, put it inside the glove compartment of the box uh, of their cars. And then uh, we'd like to invite you guys to future Driving Skills for Life uh, seminars. We've got uh, several lined up for the year. Check our Facebook page for updates. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ready? Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. This head-to-head pits the Ford Territory Titanium against the Hyundai Tucson 2.0 GLS 6 automatic transmission in a spec-to-spec -spec comparison. The Callback SUV segment is among the most crowded with noteworthy options in the local automotive market. It's getting tougher buyers without a strong sense of brand loyalty to choose among the compact SUVs now available. Style and design are at best subjective. Brand reputation also factor in a lot. But as more options are made available, affordability and value for money begin to weigh more heavily in the decision-making process. What do distributors of five-seater compact SUVs equipped in their entries to stand out in a very crowded market? Let's check out in a spec-to-spec -spec comparo two options in the five-seater compact SUV segment. The next-gen 4 Territory Titanium 1.5-liter EcoBoost 7-speed automatic transmission is listed at 1.335 million pesos and the all-new Tucson 2.0 GLS 6AT is listed at 1.57 million pesos. The next-gen 4 Territory is 4,630 millimeters long, 1,935 millimeters wide, and 1,706 millimeters tall with a 190 millimeter minimum ground clearance and a 2,726 millimeter long wheelbase. The all-new Hyundai Tucson is 4,630 millimeters long, 1,865 millimeters wide, and 1,665 millimeters tall, with a 181 millimeter ground clearance and 2,755 millimeter long wheelbase. The new Ford Territory Titanium exterior features honeycomb grille, signature daylight running lights, full LED headlights with automatic on-off function, front and rear fog lamps, chrome door handles, aluminum roof rails, rain-sensing windshield wipers, and power folding, power adjustable side mirrors with heater and side turn indicators. Rear spoiler with high mounted stop lamp and 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped by 235-55 R18 tires. The 2.0 GLS 6AT features 3D parametric style grill with jewel like surfaces in dark chrome, multi face reflector headlamps with auto light function, 
LED daytime running lights and position lamps, LED rear combination lamps, and 18-inch alloy rims. Other exterior features include body-colored outside rear mirrors that are heated and power fold and come with turn signal repeaters, rear fog lamps, roof rails, rear spoiler with high mount stop light that hide the rear wiper. Ford equipped the next-gen territory titanium with keyless entry and push-button start, partial leather perforated seats, 10-way power adjusting driver seat, 4-way manually adjusting front passenger seats, rear seats that split and fold 60-40, and tilt and telescopic steering column. The Territory Titanium also features a 7-inch digital instrument cluster, dual-zone electronic automatic air conditioning with rear aircon vents, full floor console with two cup holders, rear center armrest with cup holder, windscreen-mounted USB port, wireless charger, power windows, auto-dimming rear view mirror, sun visors with illuminated mirrors. The Tucson 2.0 GLS features smart key and push-button start, leather upholstery, manually adjusting driver and front passenger seats, tilt and telescopic leather-wrapped steering wheel with buttons and switches for audio and cruise control, 10.25-inch TFT display for the instrument cluster. Other standard comfort and convenience features include overhead console with lamp, room and mood lamps, sun visors with mirror and illumination, center console with cup holders, power windows and door locks, automatic air conditioning, 12-volt accessory socket. The Territory Titanium infotainment system comes standard with a 12-inch color touchscreen, voice recognition, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and wireless connectivity, Bluetooth, Type-C and Type-A USB ports, and six speakers. The Tucson infotainment system features an 8-inch touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, customizable voice recognition, six speakers that include two tweeters, Bluetooth, wireless charger, as well as two charging USB ports. The next-gen territory has also been developed to be a fun drive powered by an EcoBoost 1.5-liter engine with 160 horsepower and 248 newton meters of torque. This is mated to a 7-speed automatic transmission with wet-type dual-clutch engagement system. It comes with a rotary shifter on the center console. This powertrain comes with four drive modes, Eco, Normal, Sport, and Mountain, to help driver manage various road conditions and terrains. Electronic power-assisted steering makes piloting the territory almost effortless. The suspension on the next-gen territory features your usual McPherson struts in front and multi-lake independent system in the rear. The brakes are also the usual ventilated front solid rear disc combination. The Tucson 2.0 GLS is powered by a SmartStream G2.0 1999cc gasoline engine putting out 156 PS and 192 Nm of torque, made it to a 6-speed automatic transmission. There are four drive modes, Eco, Normal, Sport, and Smart, selected using a toggle switch. The Hyundai Tucson suspension uses front McPherson struts and rear multi-link combo. The brake system gets 16-inch discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front. Standard safety and driver assist tech includes anti-lock brake system, electronic stability program with traction control, hill launch assist and hill descent control, cruise control, blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert, and door opening collision warning system. Also added for safety are three-point seat belts, child safety rear door locks, ISOFIX child seat attachments, tire pressure monitoring system, and six airbags. Hyundai equipped the all-new Tucson with anti-lock braking system with electronic stability control, downhill brake control, hill start assist control, trailer stability assist, manual speed limiter, tire pressure monitoring system, immobilizer, rear view monitor with parking guidance dynamic, and front and rear parking distance warning. Standard for safety are six airbags, child safety rear door locking, anchors for child seat, and electrochromic rear view monitor. When comparing SRPs after checking specs, also make sure to find out about promos extended by brands and dealerships.
Zoom UX. Take the lead. Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily ride or weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes, from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services, as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Hello, I'm Johan Tiu from Sonax Philippines. We are at LG2 e. Rodriguez and we will be showcasing our new DIY line, the what we call the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. So first we have the Ceramic Active Shampoo. It's a car shampoo with ceramic coating properties. So to apply this, you need to put 50 ml to 10 liters. That's the ratio. So just put a few here. Put it in a bucket of water and agitate it a bit. After which, you can wipe it on the car. So after applying the shampoo, you wash it off with water. And after you just wipe it down. Okay, so that's basically how you apply the ceramic active shampoo. This part where we put the shampoo, there's already a thin layer of ceramic coating because that's the purpose of the ceramic, the extreme ceramic line. So we'll just test it. So you can see there's already a few water beading hydrophobic effect. Just wash off the shampoo with water. You can just wipe it dry. So that's how easy it is to apply the Ceramic Active Shampoo. So if you want instant ceramic coating on your car with washing, you can just get the Active Shampoo and you'll instantly have a thin, coat, thin ceramic sealing on the paint. So that's how easy it is to apply the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. For more information, you can visit our FB page, which is Sonax Page Official, our IG page, which is also Sonax Page Official, and TikTok page, which is also Sonax Page Official. So it's very easy to find us. Thank you. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Honda Cars Philippines launched the refreshed city and brio at the Mega Fashion Hall in SM Mega Mall where it showcased its subcompact sedans and hatchbacks to the delight of mall goers over four days. We are having the uh, media launch event for the new uh, Honda City and the new Honda Blue York. We are here in the SM Mega Mall in Fashion Mall, wherein we just launched the new Brio and Honda City. This is a minor model change. If you're going to observe these uh, two new models, there are a lot of improvement. No? The Honda City, it's more sporty because of the design that we did. And also with the Brio, it's also a new design that we did, like exterior and interior. Another thing that uh, adds feature to the Honda City is the Honda Sensing. You know? We made it as a standard for all the variants of uh, Honda City. This is basically uh, to promote safety in accordance with the vision of Honda of having a free collision society in the future.
basically for uh, new uh, Rio, we are targeting the young individuals no? who are uh, looking for a sporty and uh, a car that uh, features a lifestyle uh, vehicle. No? And for the all new uh, city, we're looking for the uh, business-minded and individual who would like, and family-oriented persons no? who would like to uh, use this car as their everyday uh, car. We are in Batangas Racing Circuit and uh, last choice I think we officially uh, introduced the new Honda City and the new Honda W to the uh, Philippine market and today after a month after the uh, official launch event uh, we are with our media plans for the new Honda City and the new Honda W um, media drive. Honda's vision has been to achieve a uh, pollution-free society and uh, we are basically promoting you know, our products in order to align with that vision. So what we did was to standardize the Honda Sensing feature for our city and we have started basically with other models like uh, the Civic, the CRB, HRB and now for city in all variants we uh, did it, we standardized the Honda Sensing feature. Objectively, again, different. One is your sedan. It's a economical and practical car. It's a four-door sedan. I'd say maybe the sweet spot for the economy is maybe at about 80. It's a, I found that to be the most multiple speed. The Brio naman is a, it's also economical, right? Uh, but it's a little bit smaller and nimbler. One is like you're, you're cruising in your everyday, the other one is like you, you try that in the going to the supermarket and, and going to the car park or something like that. It's, it's just so easy, yeah. yeah. At the launch, Honda executives appeared confident of selling 500 units of the new city and 300 of the new Brio a month. It would be interesting to ask Honda executives whether they met the targets or how close they came to the projected numbers. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Car review takes a look at the BMW X3 xDrive 20D business, the German brand's entry into the premium midsize SUV segment. It can't be denied that BMW has a ready market. Anything that German car maker rolls out surely have buyers already wanting to drive one home. The brand has built an image and reputation for turning out automobiles that exude class while providing sheer driving pleasure. Over the years, it has also evolved a look that is iconic yet always seems fresh and timeless. Car enthusiasts would immediately recognize a BMW when they see one going slow and stately in city streets or zooming past on open highways and empty country roads. This is especially true with the BMW X3 xDrive 20D business. The brand's entry in the premium midsize SUV segment at 4,708mm long, 2,138mm at its widest point, and 1,676mm tall with a 2,864mm long wheelbase. It must be said, however, the BMW describes the X3 as a sport activity vehicle. The iconic kidney grille is more angular and now in a single-piece frame with a black sensor bar in the middle. Underneath the full LED headlights, ever so slightly angled down, are vertical air intakes arranged in a triangular design to frame the new front bumper. The window frames and roof rails are finished in satin aluminum. 
The redesigned full LED taillights also look both modern and timeless, coupled with new larger flush-fitting freeform exhaust trim. Completing the sporty look are roof rails and 18-inch light alloy wheels in V-spoke 618 design wrapped by 225-60 R18 tires. Getting into the X3 is made easy with a BMW Comfort Access System, aka keyless entry with push button start. A powered tailgate add to convenience in loading such things as luggage and sports gear. The refreshed X3 cabin is all about making the driver both comfortable and totally in control of the vehicle. It starts with electrically powered front sport seats with pronounced side bolsters. The seats are upholstered in high quality black Vernasca leather. Also wrapped in sport leather is the leather steering wheel with multiple buttons, switches, and controls. The BMW X3 xDrive 20D comes with a freestanding central control display with touch function. Below the standard control display is the control panel for the standard 3-zone automatic air conditioning with integrated center vents. BMW has integrated much of the entertainment, communication, and information ecosystems in the X3. The BMW Live Cockpit Plus system in the X3 runs on BMW Operating System 7 that features BMW Intelligent Voice Control, connected music, and wireless smartphone integration with access to either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Some of these functions can also be controlled using the iDrive Touch controller found on the center console. The BMW X3 xDrive 20D business is powered by a 2-liter inline 4-cylinder engine with BMW twin powered turbo technology that delivers a maximum 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. BMW claims this enables the SAV to accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in 7.9 seconds and reach a top speed of 213 km per hour. Power and torque are sent to all four wheels via an 8-speed Steptronic Sport Transmission in BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system. The X-Drive automatically and smoothly sends the precise amount of power to the front and rear wheels for added traction, stability, and safety, depending on road surfaces and terrain, as well as the drive mode selected by the driver. BMW also expanded the range of advanced driver assistance systems in the X3 to enhance comfort, safety, as well as fuel efficiency. Standard systems include cruise control with braking function, automatic start-stop function, a tire pressure monitoring sensor, and what BMW calls the driving experience control with Eco Pro mode to reduce fuel consumption by encouraging a more sedate driving style. Added for safety are active protection, multiple airbags, crash sensor, interior and exterior mirror with automatic anti-dazzle function. The BMW X3 xDrive 20D business can be considered an ideal model for those in the market for their first premium mid-size SAV from the German automaker. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney from Speed Lab and today I'm going to teach you how to look at a dyno chart, read and understand it. Spend enough time on the internet and online and you'll probably come across one of these when talking about performance numbers. This is called the dyno chart and this is the most effective and straightforward way to prove that something makes power or not when it comes to engine modifications. A dyno chart basically tells you how much power and torque your car makes. That's it. It's very simple. It does not tune, it does not add power, it does not do anything except measure the power, horsepower of your car. It's basically a glorified treadmill for the car. So in every dyno chart, there's always two axes. One is the x-axis, which is always the RPM of the car being measured. So in this case, it's a Montero, so it's from 2,000 to 4,300. Then the y-axis here has horsepower and torque. 
for the Dyna Pack Dino Chart, they split it into two. But later we'll review another popular Dino Chart that you've seen, which is from Dino Jet. So these lines represent the number of runs in one dyno session. For the Dyna Pack one, each file can contain up to six runs, which is represented by these six colors. We'll start with the horsepower side, which that's what everybody keeps asking, and that's what everybody sort of understands a little bit more. The first run is this red line, which is almost always here, the baseline power, which means car comes into the shop, nothing has been done, we put it here, we take a power reading of what it is. Whether it's stock or slightly modified, it's called the baseline because we haven't done anything yet. Then subsequent runs, obviously the expected is you should get more power, which is why you're having it dyno tuned in the first place or having modifications done. And this is our second run. This is a, a historical one, which we already did a few weeks ago with the ECU reflash. So from here, you can see the peak power at stock is around 155, which is indicated here. This is our power after reflash, which is 181. Note that the RPM is pretty much the same, 3,400 RPM. So that's the correct way to compare power, actually, or anything. It has to be on the same RPM scale. Then this is what we did just now with a full exhaust installed. So we're up to 219 horsepower for this old 2009 3.2 Montero. Torque is the same way. You read the graph here, so with diesels, it always starts off high, then goes lower. But as you can see, we have a pretty big, almost 150 foot-pound of torque increase here. From 312 to 446. That's pretty big, considering, just for reference, your average civil 0.8 only makes 100 foot-pounds of torque. Most people always quote when they get into these internet arguments is, Oh, my car makes 100 horsepower because that's what the brochure says. You are only partly right. It's 100 horsepower at a certain RPM. Like for this Montero, when people ask how much power did you make? Oh, stop, we make 155 at 3,500 RPM. This is important because if you look at the chart here at the bottom, you're only making 120 horses at 2,250 RPM. This part and this part almost nobody mentions. And here, towards the end of the RPM graph, you're actually only making 90 horsepower at red line of a diesel Montero. This is the number that everybody's most interested in, but this only tells part way of the story. Because here we have practically 155 to 218, that's about 65 horses. But at here, if we take these two points, it's actually closer to 60 horsepower. What you're most concerned about is the area in between the two charts that you're looking at. This one here. This is only one point, but you have to take the whole chart and the whole dyno as a whole. Same thing with torque. It starts off big, then gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you go down to red line. So next time when you want to argue with your friends, you should always ask, okay, horsepower at something RPM. It always has to have that because power by nature is defined as work over time. Torque is the work that you're doing, the amount of force that you're giving. Power is time, meaning how much force you apply over a period of time. And that period of time is from 2,000 to 4,300 RPM. And the M in the RPM is minutes. So revolutions per minute. That's your measure of time. So power always has to have a length of time and the time component in between. It cannot just be, it's not a static thing like, oh, I make this much power now. Yes, and, but what about a second later? What about five seconds later? Okay, that's for the Dyna chart from a Dyna Pack. The Dyna Pack is actually a brand of dynamometer. The same way that you have an Orion brand ruler, you have a Century brand ruler, and a Stanley brand ruler. Different dynos have different brands, but they all measure the same thing. It's horsepower. And then this is another type of dyno. This is from DynoJet, which is you also see a lot on the internet. And this is their dyno chart. As you can see, it's also the same. You have RPM here at the bottom. You have power here at the y-axis, but you have torque here at the other y-axis. What they do is they intersperse it with each other. Same thing also, you can have multiple runs represented by multiple colors. So this is two runs. Uh, first run is red, second 
red is blue. So this is the line for power, these two. Then this is the line for torque. Same thing also, there's a pointer here that you can put here and the values here will change. Also, maximum power at, it will show you here, 180 and 146 horsepower at this RPM here, at 6,000 RPM. Then it will show you also max torque, which is somewhere here at 5,000 RPM. So once again, you read it the same way, power at RPM, torque at RPM. And as you can see, when you're only at 2,500, you're only doing about 20 horse, then it gradually gets bigger, 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 until red line. Same thing with torque, this is a gasoline engine, so your maximum torque is made somewhere here in the middle. So some torque, some torque, some torque, big torque, big torque, then torque drops off. Now, are there other brands of dynos in the Philippines? Yes, there are. If your car comes with a printout from one of these, it is unquestioned what the numbers are. Okay, so that's how you read a dyno chart, whether it's from DynoJet or DynaPack. And if you go to the Speedlab Facebook page, I do post a lot of these things. This one, sometimes this one, because we do have a DynoJet also. And with the corresponding explanations, what these lines also mean. So yes, check it out, so you, you might learn a thing or two. That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.